Hello everyone. I'm Yi Xinhuang from Pattern Recognition Lab, University of Erlang. Today I will talk about field of view extension in computed tomography using deep learning prior. First of all, let me introduce data truncation in CombiM CT. The problem of data truncation arises in two scenarios. The first, first scenario is that in some certain clinical applications, only a certain region is of interest. For example, if we want to deploy a stent to a certain artery, or if we want to get some tissue samples with biopsy, then in these cases, some X-ray collimators will be placed between the X-ray source and the detector to reduce dose. For example, here this, this is one complete projection. If we are only interested in the area near the ear here, in this, inside this red box, then with the collimator, then only this region is acquired. Then the projections are truncated in the horiz horizontal direction. This is how data truncation arises in one scenario. In the other scenario, so because of the limited size of flat panel detectors, the projections of large objects might be outside of the detector, especially for human abdomen or thorax. For example, this is one projection image in a wide enough detector. So we can see the complete projection very well in the horizontal direction. However, in practice, because of the limited size of the pro of the detector, then only the projection inside this red box uh, is acquired. Then the projection is truncated again in the horizontal direction. So image reconstruction from truncated from truncated data directly with the standard filtered back projection method will suffer from artifacts. So here, this is one reference image and this is its FVP reconstruction from truncated data. We can see the anatomical structures outside the field of view boundary are entirely missing. And in addition, the structures inside the FOV Boundary, they have much brighter in values. So this brightness, if we plot a line, we can see its intensities look like a cup. That's why these brightness are called cupping artifacts. For truncation correction, there are many algorithms proposed so far. For example, heuristic extrapolation methods. And the analytic reconstruction methods, including DBP and ICHAC, and also compressed sensing, and also deep learning. For deep learning, so far we have only known three papers published to the best of our knowledge. So the first paper is from the KAIST group. They proposed to use the UNET to post process of B FBP reconstruction images or DBP reconstruction images. They observed that using the DBP reconstruction images as the input of the unit, they can achieve better image quality or more robust results than using the FBP reconstruction images. The second paper is from Chen Guanghong's group. They have proposed a convolutional neural network called ICTNet to directly reconstruct images from sonogram data in different trajectories, including image reconstruction from truncated data. However, these two methods only address image quality inside the FOV boundary. For the anatomical structures outside the FOV, they are still missing. So, here, the talk of this work, this work is about FOV extension. For FOV extension, so our Siemens colleagues have proposed to 
apply the unit to post-process FBP reconstruction from extrapolated data. They have already achieved promising results. However, we know that the robustness of deep learning is affected by many factors. For example, noise, insufficient training data, or adversarial perturbations. Because of these factors, incorrect structures might occur in the deep learning reconstruction. And the deep learning reconstruction with such incorrect structures might be not consistent with measured data. Therefore, here we propose a data consistent reconstruction method to improve deep learning reconstruction with the help of compressed sensing. Now, here I will talk about our data consistent reconstruction method for FOV extension. Here, the neural network we use is also the state of the art unit. And here, the input of the unit is image reconstructed from water cylinder extrapolated data. Water cylinder extrapolation is a widely used extrapolation method to reduce copying artifacts. Here we can see this is one image reconstructed from WCE data. So compared with the FVP reconstruction, we can see the brightness or the copy artifacts are reduced very well. However, the anatomical structures outside the FOV are still not correct compared with the reference image. That is why we still need deep learning to further improve these anatomical structures outside the FOV. And as I mentioned, because of noise or insufficient training data, so some uh, in incorrect structures might be reconstructed by deep learning and the final reconstruction image is not consistent with the measured data. Then here we have, we propose our data consistent reconstruction method. Here this rectangle area is one complete projection and in the green area, so it is acquired by the actual detector. So we denote the projections by PM. And because we want our final reconstruction to be consistent with the measured projection data, then we will have this data fidelity term. So the norm of AM times F minus PM should be smaller than epsilon one. Here, AM is the system matrix for the measured regions. However, here these blue regions are still truncated or they are not measured. With our deep learning reconstruction, it can provide prior information for these unmeasured regions. So, the whole, so these unmeasured projections can be simply estimated by the forward projection of the deep learning reconstruction. So it is PU hat equals AU times FU net. Here, AU is the system matrix for the unmeasured projections. With PU hat, now we have the data fidelity term for this unmeasured region or this truncated regions. The AU times F minus PU hat, its norm should be smaller than epsilon 2. Now, because there is noise contained in the measured projections, and also because of discontinuous intensity at this transition area between PM and PU, so some artifacts might still occur. Therefore, here we apply compressed sensing to further reduce noise and artifacts. Particularly, we he here we apply the WTV algorithm, which uh, further details can be, can be found in the reference 6. Now this is the overall objective function for our DECA method. So we want to minimize the WTV term of the image with the two data fidelity terms for the measured regions and unmeasured regions or truncated regions respectively. And because we solve the objective function in an iterative manner, 
So we can initialize the reconstruction with the deep learning reconstruction for fast acceleration. Now I want to show some results in the noisy case. So this is the reference image, and this is the FPP reconstruction and the WCE reconstruction as we have seen. Now this is the reconstruction with compressed sensing only. We can see the noise inside the FOV are reduced very well and the anatomical structures can be observed. However, the structures outside the FOV are missing. With deep learning, the unit is able to restore the anatomical structures outside the FOV. However, portal noise remains. And with our proposed DECA method, both the structures outside the FOV and the inside the FOV are reconstructed and the portal noise is also reduced. And it also achieves the smallest root mean square error for the whole image. We also redisplay these images in a narrow window, then we can see the anatomical structures better. Then we can see, yeah, with the DECA method, it reconstructed it reconstructs all the structures inside the FOV and outside the FOV very well, and the noise is also reduced compared with other results. So here is a short conclusion. So we can see the DECA as a hybrid method. DECA combines the advantages of compressed sensing and deep learning. So for compressed sensing only, it is not able to reconstruct the structures outside the FOV. And for deep learning only, it is sensitive to noise. And with our DECA method, it is able to reduce copy artifacts as well as post noise. And it is able to reconstruct the structures both inside and outside the FOV. So thank you very much.